What's up, guys? Welcome into the Modern Christian Dudes Podcast. My name is Jeremiah Johnson. Alongside the whole crew today, we got Funko Pop Greg Walden is back with hey, us. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, fresh, Funko Pop Greg Walden? Fresh <laughs> off the bandwagon. Yeah, That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Big Ben, a.k.a. King Ranch, ask you in the house. How are you, Big Ben? Pretty good. Can't complain. Having some issues with the King Ranch. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. I, I think I have a caliper that's sticking. Oh. Ooh. So I think I got to cre- grease some pins and maybe see if the calipers rust a little bit. Have you had that problem before, Funko Pop Greg Walden? Yet. Not yet. Nope. All right. Well, hey, we are dudes talking news, sports, and got back at it. It was just Big Ben and I last week because Funko Pop Greg and uh, Greg Gregan. Greg Walden was Gregan. gone. <laughs> hey, well, <laughs> how, I forgot how we threw him under the bus last week. You recall that? He uh, he bought a Funko Pop. Yeah. Funko Pop. He bought a Funko Pop. He, Which one was it? Funko he's, Pop. He's Greg off Walden. the bandwagon. Colonel Sanders. Well, good Kurt, thing you Colonel Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I couldn't okay. resist, man. Good thing like, you did not take him to Comic Con. Oh, it Kansas would have been bad. City. Yeah, and let's yep. start off the show with that. Ben, Big Ben, aka yep. King Ranch, ask you went to the Comic Con. I did. It was Kansas awesome. City. It was awesome. Describe was, was the experience. Uh, well, you, you, I've never been before. Actually, I've never been to a Comic Con, so I wanted to do it. I invited you. Yes, I forgot to invite Greg. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would probably would have went. You would have went. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, next year, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe next year. If I do it now, I'll do it on. I'll probably go on Friday because it's cheaper. I think it's more expensive on Saturdays because all the celebrities are there. Okay. Uh, I saw Lou Ferrigno. Sweet. About ten feet away from him, uh, I was like, "Hey, there's, there's that guy from King of Queens." <laughs> 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 he didn't hear me though. I don't think he was paying yeah. attention. Uh, a couple of kids from the Stranger Things. Um, I saw uh, Stephen Amell. Yeah, from Green Arrow. So okay. that, was, that was pretty cool. But uh, but lots and lots of artists, uh, toy booths. And I, I found your Holy Grail, Pastor. Yes, the Holy Grail, oh, the Funko the Pop. Holy, the Holy Grail. Donatello. I found Donatello. Now, a question. If you would have gone to <laughs> Comic-Con, would you have came home with Donatello? I don't know if I would have because it, it was a $100 it bill. It was a $100 I don't think bill. I could do yes. that. And it, when I walked up to the table the first time, they had all three of them. They had Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Raphael. But the spot for Donatello was was empty. Mm-hmm. And I asked him, I was like, so I guess you had Donatello and it's already gone. He's like, well, I've got another one here somewhere. I was like, oh, how much is it? He's like, $100. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, no thanks. Yeah. Do they barter there at Comic-Con? I don't think they do. Okay. See, because I tried. I, I, I talked to an artist, and he, he I asked him how much his, his prints were, and his bigger prints, like the 11... Uh, I think eleven by seventeen or something. I can't remember what the size is, but he's like, he's like, those are fifty dollars, and, and I was like, I was like, oh okay. He's like, well, I've got smaller ones too. They're twenty. They're you know about yeah, not, not very big. Small. And uh, I was like, well, sorry, it's, uh, it's just too expensive for me. He's like, okay. He's like, give me a price, and I was like, twenty dollars <laughs> for the big one. And he's like, I can't do that. And I was like, yeah. it's like I know you can. Comic Con. <laughs> so Comic Con is really being. I think when I think of them. Um, the primary reason you would go, or a couple, would be number one, cosplay. Yes. To dress up. Yeah. Yep. Number two, to see superstars or famous people. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Number three, just spend money. Yeah. Well, recklessly on stuff. It was the three of us went, <laughs> me, me and my wife and Pastor Justin. We all went and none of us spent money. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice. I know. Yeah. I know. I just, I couldn't spend $60 for an autograph. From I can't, yeah. From Stephen Amell, or I think Lou Ferrigno yeah. was forty dollars for a signature. I was like, I just can't. I was like, I'll just look at him. <laughs> one, theory, one theory I have relative to Comic Con is I, I'm pretty solidified in this theory now. It's like I want to keep everyone that I love that I think is like a superstar or something. Yeah. I want to keep the mystery alive, yeah. so I don't really yeah. ever want to see them in person, right? Because then it, you know, I've like t- we saw Chuck, remember we saw Chuck Norris yes, and it yes, ruined everything for yes. us. Oh, man. Well, no. <laughs> That's for kinda, me, it didn't. <laughs> it, for me, I don't think it, it, it ruined it for me. I, I was in awe. But I, the, the, biggest, the biggest thing from seeing Chuck Norris in person, I think, was his white, all <laughs> white New Balance, New Balance shoes. <laughs> Chuck Norris wears white New Balance shoes. And I think New Balance is seriously missing out on an ad campaign there. Chuck Norris, roundhouse kick, yeah, Chuck yes. Norris wears your shoes. You need to make a commercial about that. Yeah. But. I just was like, wow, he's like an older middle-aged man with New Balance <laughs> shoes, and I'm bigger than him. Right. And he there's not much signing. a lot physically intimidating about him. Yeah. And, I mean, this, I'm not trying to be, like, inappropriate, but, like, I'm like, well, his wife's pretty. I like the commercial. Well, like, <laughs> I, think, I think what people, a lot of people didn't realize is that his wife was the one that was ushering people in. 
at the front of yeah. the line. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people didn't know that, but I was standing right next to her and I, I was kind of talking to her a little bit and I don't yeah. think anybody else realized that that's who that was. Yeah. But, so I think if I, I saw a lot of people, it would just ruin it for me because yeah. they'd be like, oh, they're just I, people. <laughs> I don't, I think, well, and that, that's the way my wife is too. She says, she's like, I'm not very impressed. And I was like, I, I want to see them. I don't necessarily have to meet them. I just think it's cool. I've seen Lou Ferrigno in person. I've seen Stephen yeah. Amell in person. And they don't do any like Q&A or sit down sessions? They did. Or, yeah. Okay. The one where I saw Stephen Amell, he was in a panel uh, doing questions and stuff. And he, <laughs> we, I basically walked in for about two minutes and then walked out. I was like, that's all I needed. Yeah. Because <laughs> I have a friend that's obsessed yeah. with Stephen Amell. I took a picture. And then I sent it to him. I was just like, so he could be jealous. So I didn't know if you maybe saw that one super crazy fan that like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> like I went to Star Trek convention like like 20 years ago uh -huh. and they had Leonard Nimoy was there. Yeah. Uh, oh, John Delancey, the guy that plays mm -hmm. Q uh, and some other actors that maybe had some other roles on Star Trek, but mm -hmm. kind of not really, really predominant ones. Right. So they had everybody in this like auditorium and Leonard Nimoy and John Delancey was taking questions. Mm -hmm. So Leonard and Emily, his turn to answer questions. So this lady is like, lady on the other end, like raising her hand. Like, so Leonard and I pointed her out and she's like, oh gosh, Star Trek just changed. I mean, she's bawling and everything. Yeah. Star Trek just changed my life. And you can tell Leonard and Emily is like, oh my goodness. He probably he still tells that story to his friends. <laughs> and Leonard and Emily is like, you can just tell. He's like, oh, I got the, I got the crazy one. <laughs> I, I have to say the only, the only crazy thing I did with celebrities is uh Johnny from Cobra Kai and, and Karate Kid was there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, what I've watched a lot of interviews of him and he says that he hates when people yell, sweep the leg yeah. from Kid. <laughs> and so I, I, uh, I yelled, sweep the leg, just to be annoying. <laughs> and I had a, well, you had to wear a mask. And then I also had, I was dressed up as fat Thor. Fat Thor. So I had a, <laughs> a go to. Of that. so you can't see my, my mouth. So I, I, uh, I just yelled it. And, uh, and Sa Sam Jones, who, who was flash Gordon, uh, was like right next to me, about ten feet away. He like, looked over and just smiled and just like, <laughs> shook his head. There's, there's got to be a real beauty, but so as as popular and cool as they are, mm -hmm. I, there's got to be moments when they're getting ready in their hotel room that they feel like a loser, like Lou Ferrigno, yeah. you know, like, dude, I'm a seventy year old man, right, and I'm still living off. Yeah. The fame of being a green monster I, well, from a really see, old joke. I, 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 told, I told my wife, I was like, if, <clears throat> if I were to actually go up to him, I'd be like, man, King of Queens, I just absolutely loved you in King of Queens. This is like, be the, that be the thing that yeah. I talk to him about rather than him being the Hulk. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I was just like, well, that was just, yeah. Because he was, he was uh, Kevin James's neighbor in, in King of Queens, the TV okay. show. Most famous person you've ever met. Modern Christian dudes will do our discussion here, but most famous person you ever met was that the Star Trek guy? You didn't meet him though, but well, I mean, I didn't really talk to him because it's like seventy five dollars to get his autograph. I'm like, I'm not paying seventy five, mm -hmm. but I did get his and Johnny Lance's autograph because the one you know, it was this before I met my wife, so make sure she's not like a man. I was trying to date this one girl at work, and so she's like a huge Star Trek fan. So she's like, Will you come to a Star Trek convention with me? I'm like, sure. So she had a friend that actually paid for the autograph, but I guess she got sick or didn't show up. So I ended up getting the uh, the uh, picture right. autograph by, by Leonard Nimoy and uh, John Delancey. That's pretty cool. But that was probably the most. Uh, I mean, I didn't really in interact with him. Yeah. And I also saw Carmen. Yeah. I also saw Carmen last year. Carmen. <laughs> Carmen's been in this office yeah, at yeah. this desk on this podcast. That's probably the most f famous Christian. Yeah, I've yeah. spent time with him. Uh, Big Ben. J Money. Yeah. Now, I, I, I seriously, I've, <laughs> no. I've never actually met a famous person okay. that I know of. I think the person I had legitimate interaction with was the governor of Utah, Governor Gary uh -huh. Herbert at the time. I was personally invited to his mansion. At least I got the really fancy car and everything. And then uh, when I came in, he was over there. We talked for maybe two minutes or something like that. We ate food. I, I laid hands on him myself and prayed for him in tongues as well. Ooh. That's that's abnormal. In, so yeah, in Utah. and he's a big Mormon. So I don't know what he thought of that, but uh, yeah, that was that probably was a like culture a shock for him. Uh, maybe probably. felt it in his bosom, as they say maybe, in the maybe. LDS world. Well I hope up, so. Well up inside. Anyway, let's talk some new sports and God. We talk Comic Con, and I know that those all over the world. So um, I'll, I'll get to one someday. You'll get to one. We'll we'll get there. Maybe we'll go next Funko year. Pop. Yeah, Great. Yeah. MCD MCD road trip. We still need to go to Coney Island and get the and 
and see if uh, Pastor can beat the hot dog challenger. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have a couple things in terms of YouTube. Uh, I was talking about, you know, I love, I'm a big YouTube guy. And so I wanted to hype a couple things. I don't, you know, YouTube is so easy to dive down the rabbit holes of yes. these the things that pop up. And, and so last night I've now transitioned again in life. I think I want to do, are we moving away uh, from yeah, yeah. McDonald's? <laughs> I, I think I want to do the boat life. So oh, I, no. I ended up watching, <laughs> I like these alternative living YouTube channels yeah. and I found, so yeah. th these two guys that live in LA, so they talked about how expensive it is to live in LA. Yep. So the thing that you can do is live in a boat. Yep. So basically their, their boat mortgage, they have like a $50,000 small yacht, two bedroom, pretty cool overall. It costs four, they're paying $500 a month for their boat and they're paying $600 a month for the Dock. marina oh, yeah, the marine rental. Marine. Yeah. So they're yeah. saying basically we're paying $1,000, $1,200, him and his brother, Yep. To live on a sweet boat, they have all these pe people come over things. So it's on the ocean. You're in the water. Yep. He said his best friend who has an apartment, Oceanside, next to him, pays like 4000 Yikes. something yeah. a month. And that's a really good deal. See, $1,100 is still expensive to me. But the boat life. Yeah. I, and that's in L.A., though. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's in L.A. Yeah. So we moved away from vans. Yeah. <clears throat> to the boat life. Boat life. To boat life. Stockton Lake, I get just a nice little houseboat. I, can you rent live, the marina can you live on Stockton Lake? There's uh, marinas there. See, so see, why couldn't you? Uh, see, I grew up on the Mississippi River, and there are people that build houses, houseboats, and they they just kind of just float around on the Mississippi River. I I, I had a, a extensive conversation with the guy. And he says it's a lot cheaper in taxes, but you still have to like yeah. pay, get inspections and stuff like that. Right, but. I watched another video of this couple. They've they've lived on a boat. Now, I, I wouldn't do this. They were on the ocean mm -hmm. in like a sailboat, but they've been on it for 10 years. Oh he gosh. was an engineer that's like, I just want to do it for 16 months or 18 months. And, they and just, he's been doing it for 10 years. He got married to this Swedish girl. Like, they love it. I was like, well, the boat life. The, I'm feeling the boat life right now. I'm going to be honest with you. I do love the water. And so is my wife. Yeah. So... You know, it'd be pretty cool to live on a sailboat and be like, hey, let's let's go let's go to the Bahamas or let's, you know, it'd be pretty cool yeah. just to be able to. And for them, the like he said, it caused them to do that it was like a little under three thousand a month. Yeah. But he said that's because I fix a lot. of I learned how to do all the boat repair myself. He's mm -hmm. like, if you, if you need it to get it paid to get done, it would be a lot more. Right. Yeah. But. The boat life. I, I then I watched I, another very quick video of this couple, <laughs> and it's always like the European people that do right. this crazy stuff. So, well, yeah, no, um, you, it's <laughs> it's big in Europe. All the channels and stuff. Yeah, this. Yeah. So this couple built a raft out of barrels, yep, plastic barrels and wood framing and a tent, <laughs> and they just putts down. They pick a different like canal every year. Wow, how awesome is this stuff? I need I, see. I, f I feel like if Pastor gonna, Rachel wasn't so structured and organized and <laughs> be live oh, streaming geez. from the Missouri River. <laughs> maybe, maybe by that time, how, how many more years you got until, until 60, 65 or 67? Uh, I mean, we're 20. Right, so we've, we've got five, we've got 20, like 25 <laughs> years to break her down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's partner like so. all, all the MCD guys partner together to break down her. Yep. Amen. Her decisions. Okay, I'm going to bounce over to my YouTube channel of the week. I'm bringing this back. Okay, I, I wanted to mention this one so bad. I know there's a billion YouTube channels. This one, I don't know how I stumbled across it again. It just went recommendations. Jungle Survivor. Uh, Jungle Survival. Have you seen this YouTube channel? Nope. Okay, I don't Wait, know. Does it do, oh, yeah, it's the yeah. two dudes. They're the, they're the ones that make all that stuff. They're, they're in some hot water right now. Are they? I don't yeah. know what country they're in. I don't know where they're they, at, but they make pools and they make, basically make pools, right? Yeah. Well, they, they make uh, pools structures. and structures and, and houses and stuff and like that. And it's just two dudes they're, with two little hat machetes. They're they're getting in trouble with environment environmentalists ah. because they build them and then they just leave them and then they decay. And there's basically, you go out in the jungle and there's huge holes in the ground. Okay. Because the water doesn't stay. So a lot of oh. people are getting mad at them. And trying to find I was reading an article here, on them. That's interesting. Yeah. Jungle survival. But it's like all the videos are all these guys building houses, pools, 
Yeah. Two dudes with machetes. It's pretty cool. And it's all like in time lapse it mode, is. but it's fascinating. It is. Really I feel bad because I'm like, is it some American white guy who said, well, hey, I'll give you guys $100 each from, to build this? From what I, under, or, from what I understand, it, the story, because I, I, I was interested in it, and the story I understand is that a they were building these, and some American was like out in the jungle and saw them. And then he's, and then that was the process. He's like, well, we should film this and put it on the internet. I think that's how that happened. Hmm. But it's been a, it's been a while since I read that article. Okay. Yeah. But Director pretty- Greg McLean and Daniel Radcliffe film survival movie jungle. No. Columbia, Eastern Australia. I don't know. Anyway, check that YouTube channel. It is like you'll watch and be totally made. So yeah. that's what I got. What do you guys got today? You want to go first? You want me to go yeah, first? Yeah, I'll go first. Uh, found an interesting article uh, for all you Top Gun fans. Top Gun. Did that come yeah. out? It's coming out, the sequel? They keep, I, they keep pushing it back. They, they keep pushing yeah. it back. I'll, you, oh, I don't have my phone. I was going to look up the date. Well, this one's probably not you know related to the actual movie, but there was a goose that was flying upside down. And I guess the expert said he was showing off to his friends. A goose flying yeah. upside down. A goose down. flying upside down. He was showing off his moves. Legit flying upside down. Yeah. November 19, 2021 is when the new Top Gun is supposed to uh, schedule to release. It was supposed to already release. Okay. Back to the duck. Okay. <laughs> so goose. there was some confusion goose. when amateur photographer Vincent Cornell, Corn, Cornell Listen posted an image of a bird on his Instagram page. He snapped the goose while it was cruising upside down in Arnhem, Netherlands in March. This led many users to question what the bird was doing and if it was okay. <laughs> then <laughs> Cornelson reassured them that the young dark gray brown, brown bean goose was fine and was just trying to impress his friends with the new tricks it had learned. <laughs> That's awesome. Globe, I, it's probably global warming. Yeah, it's, birds it's are flying 100%. upside down now. <laughs> so the question is, did they name the goose Maverick or did they just leave his name as Goose <laughs> and say the goose was actually showing you how to actually leave a cockpit? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> too soon. Yeah, yeah, too soon. I knew that I know that movie came out in the eighties, but that's too <laughs> soon. <laughs> oh um, man. I'm not planning on seeing the new Top Gun. Not a big Top no? Gun guy. And no, I'm not you're a not Tom at Cruise all. guy. Not even in, remotely interested. No, mm-hmm. The original Top Gun. I'm not a Tom Cruise guy. It's too weird. Uh, I found out too much about him personally. <laughs> Well, yeah. the eating the fetus of his wives' Ooh. children. <laughs> There's actually a lot of people that do that. Just say just so you know. <laughs> I just Uncle I Tom. didn't I wasn't really into the original because there's too many GD bombs in in that movie. I, oh, that's yeah, true. Couldn't. That's like I it's been a while since yeah. I've seen it. And poor Val Kilmer, uh, he's really uh, uh, falling uh, apart. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> now Val Kilmer, he highlighted at Tombstone. That was his like his peak of his. Uh, yeah. Pinnacle I love Val Kilmer, and he has. He, if you see pictures of him now, it's pretty bad. I have a friend that actually met him at a comic con, and he said that he. he he was pretty rough. He had he oxygen <laughs> and he had like, the, he had to have a stool to sit on. And I think he's got a trach now too. Wow. Oh my. Yeah. I mean, in his prime, I thought he had that like amazing studly. Yeah. Look, those chiseled Tomb, tombstone docks and doc holiday. Yeah. I think yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, definitely, huckle, I'm your huckleberry. I'm your huckleberry. <laughs> but that's just, all right. Name. Well, you and, uh, you, I guess you'll go see Top Gun by yourself. I'll wait till it streams. <laughs> I'll wait till it streams. <laughs> all right. So is that all you got? Upside down geese there, Funko Pop, yeah. Greg Wait for it come out on $3. Great work. $3. Great work. $3. The $3, dollars. <laughs> the $3 dollar bad value bin at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. I've seen a lot of people, a lot of my friends on Facebook posting Bucky's pictures. Bucky. Just so I just had a friend who's like, he's, He's from Mississippi, I think. And, and like, my oh, daughter, Bucky's. if my daughter's watching this, man, I was like, oh, you're kind of, you're, she's my, supposed to be my Bucky's connection. And she's like, <laughs> where's my Bucky's packages you're supposed to be sending I, me? I feel like they should build one outside of Kansas City for you, Greg. Oh, Greg Joplin, Greg. man. You think Joplin? <laughs> Joplin. <laughs> hey, you know, I, maybe I, Tulsa. Maybe Tulsa. Yeah. Uh, if I had to drive more than 20 oh. miles, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, right. Man. Funko Pop. All right. I mean, excuse me, Big Ben. Yep. I, I got a story from our favorite human on the planet. Elon Musk. Elon Musk. I know. We talk about him all the time. <clears throat> Have you heard what he's doing next? I, I saw robots. He is. Is that, oh, is that what yes. it's about? Okay, yeah. A Tesla CEO, Elon Musk, on Thursday announced that the electric car company is building a humanoid robot called Tesla Robot that will perform uh, tasks. 
So Musk revealed that the company is developing a robot that runs on the same AI technology as its fleet of autonomous vehicles. He said that the company hopes to have a prototype of the robot sometime next year. Mm. Sweet. I want one. Elon Musk <laughs> advancing us into the future. I want one. I can teach Constantly. it. My, I could teach it my job and I can just like, here, work for me, robot. <laughs> exactly. He said, <laughs> see, uh, its intent is to be friendly, of course, is what Elon Musk said. So the, the robot, is, it's five foot eight and weighs 125 pounds. It'll, ha it'll have a, a screen where the face would be and is equipped with uh, eight autopilot cameras used by Tesla to navigate the environment. The robot is powered by Tesla's full self-driving computer. Hmm. So here, Musk said that the robot will be uh, built to navigate through the world, built for humans, and eliminate dangerous and repetitive and boring tasks. And in, and in 30 and years, it'll take over the world. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a, it's a I robot all over again. But he said, yeah. he said, you should be able to tell it, please pick up the bolt and attach it to the car. <laughs> and it'll take a wrench and do that. And he said that you should be able to say, please go to the store and get me the following groceries. And it should be able to do that. Mm. So. You in the future? I can see people playing pranks on the robot. Like, hey, <laughs> go push that button. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, feel I like wouldn't say <laughs> pull my finger. <laughs> oh, my finger's gone. But I, I think I, if you read the article, it goes in and it says that they they're gonna have to like explicitly show it how to navigate the world line by line. So it's gonna mm. be very difficult. But I, I mean. I, the the Will Smith iRobot comes to mind. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I gotta be I gotta be honest with you a little bit. I love Elon Musk, but the more the more I think about it and contemplate him, I was like, he's gonna have so much power. Yeah, because if if he ends up getting the autonomous vehicle, we talked about this the other day. It's like you know, Ford, Chevy, and all these other companies have also done the electric vehicles, but you know, a lot of the infrastructure for charging electric vehicles are it, it's tesla yeah yep. so you're driving across the country and you got to charge it, it's tesla mm -hmm. so in my yep. mind at some point there's going to be a deal with ford and chevy and all these other companies with tesla to have a tesla charger yeah you know so then he's going to have like all the power basically he's going to be like the the roosevelt's in oil yeah right well rockefeller yeah rockefeller yeah. sorry rockefeller yeah and then you know he's going to have the space program. Yeah. And now he's going to have the robots too. It's like, Oh, hey, oh, <laughs> Elon Musk. Um, uh, yeah. There is, there is a small bit of worry. Yeah. Teach it to play NBA jam and go have a tournament with it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's another thing. That's another thing is the, uh, the people losing themselves, you yeah. know, with, with a, a, an, an autonomous robot. There's a huge series. Uh, I'm going to kind of digress a little bit. Or There's going to be such a huge series of questions we've never had to right. answer before yeah. as humanity right. in the next decade. For yeah. example, before I came here, I was getting my training in. I was listening to a tech podcast. I picked a random tech podcast. And their big one they were talking about, which was fascinating, was, okay, T -Mo was it T-Mobile had the breach uh, last week? Mm -hmm. T-Mobile had a oh, breach yes. um, yeah. of, yeah. of information. Yeah. And then they're talking about uh, Facebook, Twitter, that the government for all of these entities want, you know, wants them to have uh, like WhatsApp and things like this, that they need to develop a back door should the government ever need to. Yeah, yeah. That's been, that's been a hot topic since, since uh, what's his name, Snowden. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how much power that the, the government you know, But should. all this like tech questions like yeah robots you know well, that yeah there, there's another yeah. there's another with the uh ancestry and the the dna swabs too like the government's trying to get it to where they can access the that dna as well so yeah, they, they and especially with encryption technology like vpns and encryption you might think you know they, the government requires that they they have back be able to get into that encrypt encryption yeah. and, and stuff like that as well right China's doing it. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, can't the US I mean, tick, TikTok owns China, you know, yeah. or China owns TikTok. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me, and I think they tried. Just, they tried to kill it. Well, Trump tried to kill it. 
Yeah. That didn't work, though. All right. Well, let's get into some spiritual talk. I was riding my bike earlier today because I'm getting ready to do what I'm calling the I Will Finish missions campaign. I'm going to be riding pretty much across Missouri, for the most part, on this famous trail, right? Funko Pop Greg Walden called the Katy Trail. trail. It's basically a rail trail, or it used to be a railroad where they removed it, and this is a popular thing all across the country where they put, yeah. you know, take old railroads and make them trails for people, bikes, etc. So I'm going to be doing that. I, you know, it, it, it is partially selfish, I confess. I'm like, I want to ride this trail, but I was like, how can I do it redemptively with a purpose? And so I'm going to be raising money for missions. Two aspects of mission. Number one, my wife does a thing called No Price Tag, which is a purity conference for teen girls and boys. You can go to nopricetagconference.com and check that out. And then also there's some missionaries that have really gone through a struggle uh, in Africa that we're going to be helping to support. So I'm going to, it's 240 miles. I'm going to be riding four days, three nights, uh, you know, roughly 60 miles a day, et cetera, and that kind of thing. So it'll be a little bit of a physical challenge. It's not the impossible. I know it's not the impossible, right. but, you know, going to keep building uh, towards the future. But I, I, I just, I, I get fascinated with the, the concept of finishing, you know, what God puts inside of you. And the, you know, connecting it back to McDonald's <laughs> of last week. Uh, you know, I think of the McDonald brothers, mm. you know, that, they, they had this idea and this concept of fast food in McDonald's. They even tried franchising because mm-hmm. that was in their thinking, but they never brought it to completion. Right. And, you know, someone else did that. I, I need to look it up again. But the uh, Mountain Dew, the, I think it was the, I, I should know my Mountain Dew history. How dare me? But um, the Mountain Dew, uh, the brothers, I think it was called the Bartlett Brothers, but same kind of thing. They created Mountain Dew, but then eventually they were bought out by a bigger company that realized this could be a much bigger thing. So I guess argument could be, be maybe we're all called to have different roles. You mm-hmm. know, maybe that wasn't their skill set or their role, but uh, I'm focusing my spiritual thought on the idea of, of completion and on finishing and that how we should, as um, believers in Christ, when God calls us uh, to do something, number one, finish. Our salvation, you know, the goal is that we live an entire life as a follower of Jesus Christ, not giving up. Again, I saw um, just the other day, I'm trying to flip through um, some internet stuff here while we're talking, but I saw another influencer this just this last week when I was looking at churchleaders.com who came out and said, I am not a Christian, uh, who that? had, uh, I should look this up real quick. Let me see if I can find it. It's been happening. It's right there. Okay. Regular basis. Um, Joseph Solomon. So. I don't know who that is, but he was a popular Christian influencer. He had thousands of uh, followers, et cetera, et cetera. And he comes out, okay, he had um, 600,000 subscribers, 15 million views. Uh, And he comes out and he was doing, all his videos were Christian-based, talking about Jesus, uh, had been making viral videos for the last decade, decade, excuse me. And he comes up, he comes out just last week, I'm not a Christian anymore. What happens there? You can't, you know, in his quote, you can't, you can't put the t- toothpaste back in the tube. Wow, you know, it, it's 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 happening constantly. It is, and it, yeah, I I had a, I just bought a, a record recently of uh, I can't remember the band's name, um, but I I I, I remember them when I was a teenager being a, a Christian band. It was a kind of a heavy metal band, and. I, I bought their their album, their LP record, because I have a record player. I was like, oh, I can play this around my kids. Well, I got home, and I started listening to the lyrics, and it was talking about taking advantage of a woman, and like, you know, Jesus isn't for me anymore. Wow. And I, I called a friend. I was like, these guys used to be a Christian band. Like, what what happened? And basically, what what I was told was is that the, the lead singer – uh was dealing with some drug issues and some just some personal problems and he went to the church for help and they basically just destroyed him you know with with legalism and you know you should read your bible more basically and he just felt so hurt hurt by that that he turned his back on god wow now obviously my my honest belief is that well, his faith was in man and yep. not, not in yeah, his relationship good. with God. You know, I, I feel like anytime anybody turns away because of 
other people. Obviously, yeah. their faith wasn't in God, but and uh, you know, there's a theological thought process that says, well, he was never he or she or whoever might be never really saved in the first that's place. Possible. But, I mean, um, you know, uh, I, I, I guess you could draw into question what the motive was. Yeah, you know, at the beginning, if, if he saw that a Christian based deal, yeah. took but off. But I, I'm firmly in the camp of I believe people can have encounter with the Lord. And willingly walk away. Right. You know, I think we've seen those snares biblically, but I, I've seen them a lot of times in real life. Yeah. People like, well, they didn't really get saved. You know, I'm like, ah, I, I, you know, I think maybe some people, bad modes, et cetera. But let's leave that aside. I want to talk about, you know, the spirit of finishing, you know, finishing our faith, you know, that like this continued talk or theme of Paul, I'm running a race so as to finish and win the race, you know? Right. And so that's why I have that, anthem in my brain, I will finish, you know, I'm going to, I'm, I'm putting in front of me a goal and a dream and something I want to do and something I want to do for redemptively for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I want to finish it. I want, I want to complete all 240 of those miles, uh, as unto the Lord, you know, in a sense, but I'm always inspired mostly by who should we be inspired by Jesus. But, uh, in John chapter four, verse 34, this one's out of the Amplified Classic Edition, whatever that means. It says, Jesus said to them, my food nourishment is not to do the will pleasure of him who sent, uh, my, excuse me, I read that wrong. Jesus said to them, my food nourishment is to do the will pleasure of him who sent me and to accomplish and completely finish his work. And Jesus is our source of inspiration that he came in humanity, clothed in humanity with, with a calling from the Father to complete this task. It was a much bigger task than we'll ever have to do, but he completed it. He finished it. You know, he had to go through a pain, <laughs> uh, excruciating pain, uh, persecution, hardship, a lot of different things, but he finished. And so today I'm just trying to lift my spirit up. God, help me to finish, um, you know, my faith, you know, one day when I die or Jesus comes back, etc. But also Lord, there's things that you put in the hearts of your people that we're supposed to do, we're supposed to accomplish, we're supposed to finish them. And I don't want to, I know I'm not going to be perfect when I stand before your Lord one day. I'm sure, uh, I don't want to use the word regret. I could probably, God, you could probably play a tape of like, see, Jeremiah, you missed me there. You could have, but God, hopefully the visions and the dreams that you put in my heart, I was willing to, to bring them to completion and to finish them. Yeah. Yeah. Like Paul, what was it? Paul said, finish the race. We got to finish. Yeah. Any other thoughts on that, guys? Or you're just totally amazed by my amazed. words of wisdom <laughs> and understanding? Amazed. Well, I mean, there's, you know, again, this, like I say, this journey, you know, this Christian journey we're on, I mean, it's not white picket fences or, in, you, know, you know, kids at your side and, you know, cool breezes all the time. It's there's, it's, there's a lot of potholes. There's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of things, you know, things that happen that could that, that try to shake us. I mean, the enemy is constantly constantly trying to get to shake us off that path yeah and in our own flesh obviously we just still deal with our own flesh and having to you know say no to our flesh because yeah. you know flesh will try to say hey you look at this or do that or you know you, you say no you got you, you that, like i said that 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 uh we we're talking about the armor the um uh, arm full armor of god yesterday in children's church you know it's a daily process you got to put that armor on every morning because mm -hmm. if you don't the enemy's going to hit you and knock you off that path. Yeah. I'm, and I'm thinking of along the lines of, I've been reading missionary books to my boys and we've been reading through Gladys Aylward. She was in England and she was a missionary to China. And so she was this poor little girl that wanted to be a missionary to China desperately. And she's one of these missionaries who went over to starts a journey to China with nothing in her pocket and had to have complete faith. And she gets to Russia and, um, th th there's a war going on between Russia and Chinese and she walks, uh, has to walk back to like Russia from China and so, what she thought was going to be a seven to 14 day trip turned into weeks and months and this unwillingness to give up on what God put in her heart and fast forward to the end of the story. Uh, she becomes, uh, she became this national icon in China as a woman of God. She led all kinds of people to Christ um, and, but she, she went through tremendous difficulty. Uh, it's, it's a long story, but the, the spirit of a finisher was, up, was yes. upon her. And I think of people who get 
you know, and you have to analyze what, whatever you're thinking or that dream that you have inside you. Is that just like, oh, I had a really good idea of a, oh, I thought it'd just be really nice to have an orphanage someday for little African children. Okay, well, is that just some little nice little thought you had? Right. But if it's a God dream that God put inside yeah. of you, you have to finish that. Yes. You have to not just start it. it you have to bring it, bring it to completion. One of the things, too, with the, the story of Christ going to the cross is his flesh did not want to do that. You know, he, he was in the garden praying, like, God, let this this cup pass from me, you know. And Satan tempted him, you know, call on the angels, you know, while you're up there, you know. And, and you know, how many, you know, how many of us, you know, so easily take the, the comp out, right? How many of us would be, would have been there and just been like, all right, God, send the angels. I'm tired of this situation, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, you know, we, and the thing is, is like, that that is the most extreme version of that right the most extreme yeah. of, of difficulties in, in completing something but how 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 easily do we give up on on things that are not as difficult yep exactly yeah we run into one we run into one difficult moment and yep. see ya. Yep. you know we can't i can't do it i can't handle it or whatever you know and yeah pat i mean there's so many inspiring stories pastor rachel on saturday night was talking about jim Simbola, tim Simbola, jim Simbola. Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir in uh, New York. He's pastored that church for 50 years, talking about prayer and revival in that mm -hmm. church. And just these, these men and women of God that had this persevering, finishing spirit. I want that in my life. I want that. Uh, and it's not for fame. It's not for glory. It's just to accomplish the task that God has yeah. for us. You yeah. know, yeah. for some people, again, it's, it's not about, as we're in Proverbs, it's not about the amount of wealth or position. It's just about simple obedience to, you know, the call of God. When we're with, yeah. um, we had chaotic resemblance here a couple weeks ago, that band. And, uh, you know, the thing I always preach lately is success is obedience. Success is obedience. That is success. So, you know, what are they going to become this world famous band? Are they going to be skill at level? I, I don't know, like, and maybe yes or no, but it, is that the goal, you know, or is the goal to say, we want to be obedient because we felt God right. call us to do this ministry yeah. and God call us to, to go in this direction. So we're going to be obedient to that. And if he wants to take us to this, this height, that height, that is really not our primary goal. It's to, right. to accomplish, to do, and to finish the work of God. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, I think it, it, it goes to, you know, why are we here? You know, what's our purpose, right? Well, obviously in the garden, it was relationship with God, right? was originally and then Christ came and then Christ tasked us with going out to the world and, and telling the world about Jesus. And that's something that I asked the, the, I, I, you know, I think too, too often that we forget, you know, why we're here with just day to day world, you yeah. know, you going through life. It's, it's very easy to have that autopilot on. Right. And yep. I think, you, you know, when you, when you look in a mirror and you have that self-awareness moment, like that really weird, like, Oh, I exist and I have mm -hmm. control over my actions. You know, it's like, we need that self-awareness of our relationship with Christ. I yeah. think all too, too often we get complacent as Christians and forget what we're doing or, or why we're doing it, you know? And it, it, and I, I didn't want to, I know we don't really want to get into it, but Afghanistan, you yeah. know, there's a lot of news that it's coming from everywhere, but you know, there are people in Afghanistan now making that the decision, like, yes, I believe in Jesus and that Jesus is the Messiah and, and they're being killed for it. Yep. You know, there's a, there's a voice voicemail that, uh, pastor Rachel was talking about last night that there was a, a lady on a phone on the phone with a, a church in Afghanistan and they said, and they were crying out, they're coming. And, you know, and it, it that hit me hard because they, she talked about children. She, the lady could hear the, the parents telling the children, do mm -hmm. not deny Jesus, do wow. not deny Jesus. And then there was just silence after gunshots. And oh my, it's like, you know, and that's, a, that's also an extreme case of finishing, right? It's mm -hmm. like, you know, are, like, and we're, we're very, it, we have it very easy here in America. Yes. You know, right now we have the ability to be a lukewarm Christian, but persecution I believe is coming. Yep. And there's going to, you're going to have to make that decision whether or not you're hot or you're cold. Yeah. You know, do you believe or not? And, right. and you know, the, the, the interesting thing about that is, 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 is you look at the world and see where the church is growing the most. Where is, where is God moving the most? And it's usually the ones that are, are most persecuted. Yes. China, 
the ones that are, are dying for it, you know. But the, yeah. but the thing about it is, is they're making the decision hot or cold, right? So if you're, if you absolutely, that, that brings unity, right? And then God yes. just moves through that. And, you know, I, I, I feel like that's why some, some of the, the church is ineffective in America is they have that lukewarm. You know, if you take lukewarm coffee and you pour it in hot coffee, you have lukewarm coffee, right? You know, and uh, you know, you can say what you, what you will about COVID-19 and stuff, but it's a very unfortunate situation, but it also has made some people make a decision, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And in this, uh, another example, I was thinking of my daughter's start in college, things like that. My daughter went to their college class this year and they, you know, get to the end of the semester and they tell their professor, Hey, I did, you know, you gave the syllabus, you know, what we're supposed to do. And I, I decided I'm just, I just did half of it, but I did it all that half. I did. It's a plus work. Right. That, you know, that professor would be like, yeah, you wait, what? No, I told there's three papers and three tests, not two papers and right. one test. You have to finish what's on the sibl- syllabus, you know? Right. Essentially, our syllabus is the word of God that we have to finish the calling and the plans that God has for us. So anyway, modern Christian dudes talking to sports and God. Hey, subscribe, connect with us each and every week. We appreciate all you modern Christian dudes, and we will talk to you guys next time.